up all, JC3 here, the baller of YouTube, the general. Welcome to Topic Tackle. My take for today is on the real reason why Kevin Durant left Oklahoma City. It is 4th of July, meaning it's been one year since Kevin Durant blew up the universe with his decision to join the Golden State Warriors in free agency. Now, in this video, I do have to let you know that I recorded this right after the finals, and this, I recognize, is going to be extremely unpopular. So I want to tell you right now, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, go ahead and hit that dislike button too. I'm not afraid of it. And please comment down below. It helps me out. It gives me a chance to talk to you because what you hear on the internet about Kevin Durant is widely negative. So this is positive. I recorded this right after the finals, like I said, and you can hear it in my voice. Very passionate. You let me know what you think. Even if you disagree, I encourage you to at least listen, try to understand where I'm coming from, and let's get into this right now. Number one, his organization was behind Westbrook, not him. Sam Presti has his blueprint for the future in Westbrook. Well, he failed to recognize that the second best player in the world on his team has to complain about getting shots as a four-time scoring champion. While the second best player on the planet has to wait for Westbrook to pound the rock over and over, shot clock draining down to finally get the ball to put up a contested jumper that usually goes in. Number two, Durant did not cause parity problems. He is one player. Durant didn't cause Brooklyn to trade away their first round picks. Durant had nothing to do with LeBron going to seven straight finals. No parity in the East whatsoever. But yet, seemingly everyone exalts the greatness of LeBron while ruthlessly condemning Kevin Durant for seeking a chance to make it back to the finals with the team that plays unselfishly and in a style in which he thrives. Durant so desperately wanted to get back to the finals. Last time he saw them was 2012 in which he put up 30.6 points per game on 54.8% field goal shooting against LeBron James and a player on Durant's team who shot 43% in that series just wasn't going to help him get there fast enough. I think you know who that player is. Other players can straight up get better if they want to compete. Forget the Warriors, why can't someone else win in the East? But you'll call LeBron winning the East every year greatness, not a lack of parity. But then the Warriors do the same thing in the West and you call it a lack of parity. Number three, he put in his time. People, do you realize he played nine years for Seattle slash Oklahoma City? Rookie of the year, four scoring titles, an MVP, took him to the finals, put up 30 a game, 55% field goal in that series, countless game winning shots, and you say lack of loyalty? Colin Coward explains this perfectly. But people are mad now, they're resentful of Kevin Durant for his mobility and his lack of loyalty. So let's go back to Kevin Durant. So he gets drafted by Seattle. One of the richest Americans owns the team, Howard Schultz. He owns Starbucks. Howard, worth 10, 12, 15 billion, won't put in 300 million for a new basketball arena. Kevin Durant watches that. Then he goes to Oklahoma City. A little scarred, but he goes to Oklahoma City. This new owner's the best. And they trade James Harden because another billionaire wanted to avoid a luxury tax. Again, Kevin Durant saw an adult with billions squabble over millions for a small luxury tax. And then he watches his first and second coaches, P.J. Carlissimo, Scotty Brooks, capable men, certainly, fired with winning records. And again, the messaging to a young Kevin Durant is <laughs> loyalty. What is loyalty worth? Then he watches Kevin Garnett leave Minnesota, LeBron leave Cleveland, and they're both rewarded. And he watches LeBron and KG and no loyalty anywhere. And Kevin Durant should be applauded because like a smart kid, he watched the good things his parents did or his, his peers did or his contemporaries did, and he chose that path. Lastly, number four. Durant didn't make the easy move as everybody's saying, he made the risky move. It would have been easy for KD to stick it out in OKC and pull the loyal thing, where even if he would have continued to lose West Finals with a 40% shooting ball-centric point guard Westbrook at the helm, he would be praised for trying over and over again until he retired with no rings. Golden State wasn't the sure move, it was the risky one, where if he didn't win immediately, 
The avalanche would have fallen on him faster than LeBron in 2011. He had to win. He had to win now, and he had to win MVP. And he did it against an all-time great player in LeBron, in which no win is guaranteed against. This was not a guaranteed victory, considering what we saw from LeBron and the Cavs in last year's Finals 2016, taking down a 73-9 team. This was no guaranteed victory. Kevin Durant had to step up. He did. So I recognize a lot of you out there are going to do what I like to call keep the blinders on and never give KD the respect, and that's your choice. I've just never heard anyone give the take that I gave today, and it's finally time for something different to get out there. So if you enjoyed or didn't enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, leave your feedback, comments down below. We'll be back with more Topic Tackle soon. JC3 out.